At Starbase, the pace of work has been astonishing since the first integrated flight test of Starship one month ago. From the installation of foundation piles to ongoing testing and preparations, SpaceX and the Starship program have been incredibly productive. However, there is still more to be done before the eagerly anticipated second launch of Starship. In the early hours of Friday morning, Ship 29's combined nose cone and payload section were lifted using the new ship load spreader in High Bay and briefly stacked onto the common dome section. Monday morning saw the arrival of a new yellow Buckner LR-1300 crawler crane that will likely be used to help build the new mega bay. That afternoon, over at the Massey's test site, workers in a man lift were seen installing a flight termination system onto the side of the B-6 test tank. A short time later, the FTS was detonated destroying B-6. While SpaceX has not said anything official regarding this test, it was likely a test of an upgraded system following the issue of the first integrated flight test. On Tuesday, Ship 29's nose cone and payload section were once again raised into the air using the ship load spreader with some stabilizing straps added and stacked onto the common dome section. Later, the remains of the B-6 test tank were tipped over as crews worked to scrap it. At the same time, SPMTs picked up Ship 25 and began moving it into position for the eventual departure. Wednesday morning, Rover 2 caught SpaceX's Grove GMK-7550 lowering a rebar cage into a freshly drilled hole near the launch for a new friction pile. Meanwhile, one of the smaller Grove cranes was busy installing racks of the new high-pressure tanks that will likely be part of the new water-cooled steel plate system for underneath the launch mount. Overnight, Wednesday into Thursday, Ship 25 rolled onto Highway 4 and began its return trip to the launch site. Thanks to a tweet from SpaceX, we know that they plan to static fire all six of its Raptor engines in the near future, which will be the vehicle's first static fire despite spending more than a month on test stand B with its engines installed earlier this year. Does this mean SpaceX is planning to use Ship 25 for the second integrated flight test? Let us know your thoughts below. Later, Thursday morning, Ship 29's mid-lock section was moved into high bay in preparation for stacking after the common dome section is fully welded to the bottom of the payload section. That afternoon, Raptor Roost camera caught sight of several sections of windows finally installed on the top level of Mega Bay. Down at the launch site, SpaceX's LR-11000 lifted Ship 25 from its transport stand and placed it onto Test Stand B in preparation for its upcoming static fire campaign. Meanwhile, the new LR-1300 that arrived earlier in the week finally raised its boom and luffing jib into the air, indicating that assembly was complete and it was ready to start building the newest mega bay. That evening, a large section of water deluge piping was transported on an SPMT to the launch site for installation. Thanks again to Mauricio from RGV Aerial Photography, we're able to show you a few overhead shots from Tuesday to help us understand the ongoing work. At the Massey's test site, we can see the destroyed B6 test tank as well as Ship 25 already loaded onto SPMTs and awaiting its return to the launch site. Over at the tank farm, new foundations are being prepared as SpaceX continues to develop this new active test site. At the build site, we can see that the new LR-1300 was partway through its assembly process Tuesday, while the red LTR-1200 was working to stage the steel for the first level of the new mega bay, which allows for quick and easy installation once the new crane is ready. We can also see that cleanup continues around the ground fabrication building, likely in preparation for star factory expansion in the near future. Foundation work is still moving forward on the first part of this Star Factory expansion, including additional work in the possible press pit. At the launch site, development of the water-cooled plating system continues with the assembly of the previously mentioned racks of the high-pressure gas tanks. On the former landing pad, we can see two rectangles of excavated concrete. These are likely for the new foundations for horizontal commodity tanks, similar to the methane tanks next to this area. And over at the launch mount, crews have been busy placing new friction piles in and around the mount's base. 
Elon has said that the water-cooled plates will tie into the existing legs. These new foundations around the mount are similar in size to the piles drilled several years ago for the legs. So this should allow for a strong and even base of support for the new system. We were given an unexpected treat on Friday as SpaceX tweeted out a clip of a recent Raptor test. While engine tests at McGregor have become very common, this one involved firing the engine at a water-cooled steel plate, giving us a glimpse of what we can expect during the next launch. While we do not know if this Raptor was throttled up to launch conditions, the water-cooled steel plate did seem to stand up quite well to the test firing. Switching to Florida, on Saturday morning, fairing recovery vessel Doug returned to Port Canaveral with a short fall of Gravitas following some sea trials off the coast. In the early hours of Sunday morning, Falcon 9 Booster B-1067 launched the 56 satellites of the Starlink Group 5-9 mission from Space Launch Complex 40. On Monday morning, Doug and a short fall of Gravitas headed back out to sea, this time in support of the Starlink Group 6-3 launch. On Tuesday, another Falcon 9 booster was spotted rolling down the Saturn Causeway on its way to the Horizontal Integration Facility for final launch preparations. Wednesday morning, Bob returned to port with both fairing halves from the Starlink Group 5-9 launch and was also towing Just Read the Instructions with B-1067 from the same mission. Just hours later, the dockside crane lifted the Falcon 9 booster from the deck of the drone ship and transferred it to shore for processing ahead of its return to Hangar X. On Thursday, Falcon 9 Booster B-1080 and Dragon Capsule Freedom were raised vertical at Launch Complex 39A in preparation for the Axiom 2 mission. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.